Today, I'll be reacting to the OpenAI GPT-40 demo where they showed live use case of it. And as someone who builds a lot of AI solutions for startups and clients, and we test it on a regular basis, I'll give you my thoughts on what they showed and what you can do with it. to have you here today. Today I'm going to talk about three things. That's it. We will start with why it's so important to us to have a product that we can make freely available and broadly available to everyone. And we're always trying to find out ways to reduce friction so everyone can use ChatGPT wherever they are. So one of the key things that uh, OpenAI is doing is that uh, because every time they release a new model, uh, Meta's releasing their new model of Llama, which is on par intelligence with GT4, that uh, they're realizing is that they're not going to make money just from the foundational model. So that's why they're trying to just basically give the model for free. You don't have to sign up. You can use it for free so that they at least can control the market share that they currently have and not lose more of it. So today, we'll be releasing the desktop version of ChatGPT and the refreshed UI that makes it simpler to use, much more natural as well. So they're introducing uh, the desktop app um, to users, and uh, that's pretty smart. But one thing I've, um, from doing a lot of testing with OpenAI's products, their vision is still really not good. Um, it, it sometimes it won't recognize the right things. So. The thing is with these demo videos that you watch from these companies, a lot of times they fake the demo. So unless you try it yourself, I basically wouldn't believe what they say you can do. And now the big news. Today, we are releasing our newest flagship model. This is GPT-40. GPT-4.0 provides GPT-4 level intelligence, but it is much faster and it improves on its capabilities across text, vision, and audio. So they say they released it for text, video, and audio. So as of right now, the audio doesn't work through API. And for most uh, software products, uh, you would uh, you would want to use the API version, not the UI version. Um, a lot of times the performance between the API version and the UI version is way different. So again, don't listen to everything they, they would say. Until now, with voice mode, we had three models that come together to deliver this experience. You have transcription, intelligence, and then text-to-speech all comes together in orchestration to deliver voice mode. This also brings a lot of latency to the experience, and it really breaks that immersion in the collaboration with ChatGPT. But now, with GPT-40, this all happens natively. GPT-40 reasons across voice, text, and vision. And with these incredible efficiencies, it also allows us to bring the GPT-4 class intelligence to our free users. This is something that we've been trying to do for many, many months, and we're very, very excited to finally bring GPT-40 to all of our users. So once they said that it interprets vision, text, and audio. So what that means is when they, when you speak to it, they transcribe it on the spot and it converts to text. And when it's uh, pictures, it converts it into, into pixels and then it reads it. So basically, um, we, we all have to still remember that um, all the OpenAI GPT models, they're called large language models. They're not actually omnichannel. So they're all converting it from one format to text, and then it can read text. Lastly, we've also improved on the quality and speed in 50 different languages for ChatGPT. And this is very, very important because we want to be able to bring this experience to as many people out there as possible. So we're very, very excited to bring GPT-40 to all of our free users out there. And for the paid users, they will continue to have up to five times the capacity limits of our free users. So they said that the memory has improved and that's true and that's also false. So um, if you actually test it for long enough, 
uh, I think uh, GPT-4 can do 128k tokens, which is um, a lot of pages. But I think I think it's roughly 50 pages. I'm not exactly 100% sure. But basically, um, um, the AI just works just like us humans. So it remembers what hap what happened at the beginning, what happened at the end, and stuff in the middle is blurry. So it's still gonna mess up a lot of stuff in the middle. So if you need to do a lot of um, different tasks, I would split up, I'll make a new chat uh, window for each one so that it doesn't lose the memory and it can keep a better grasp of what you've talked about so far. But GPT-40 is not only available in ChatGPT, we're also bringing it to the API. So. So our developers can start building today with GPT-4.0 and making amazing AI applications, deploying them at scale. 4.0 is available at 2x faster, 50% cheaper, and five times higher rate limits compared to GPT-4 Turbo. So um, when they lowered the price, so I think GPT-4 was, was I think roughly $50 per million tokens. GPT-4 was I think $20, so it's about half, but it's still it's still gonna cost you a lot of money to use it. Also, the other thing we found about using OpenAI's API is it's very unstable. Sometimes like they would slow down, sometimes they're fast. So the quality is just really not predictable. You can't really use OpenAI as your production level um, backend API software. Like if you do want to use it, you have to use it on Azure because Azure has a more stable API and has a higher rate limit. But I don't think GPT-4 is on Azure yet. Hi, I'm, uh, I'm Barrett. Hey, I'm Mark. So one of the key capabilities we're really excited to share with you today is real-time conversational speech. Let's just get a demo fired up. Hey, ChatGPT. Hi, Mark. How are you? Oh, Mark. I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. How about you? Hey, so I'm on stage right now. I'm doing a live demo. And frankly, I'm feeling a little bit nervous. Can you help me calm my nerves a little bit? Oh, you're doing a live demo right now? That's awesome. <laughs> just take a deep breath. And remember, you're the expert here. I like that suggestion. Let me try a couple deep breaths. Can you give me feedback on my breaths? Okay, here I go. <laughs> Whoa, slow down. <laughs> Do a bit there. Mark, you're not a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> breathe in for a count of four. Okay, uh, let me try again. So I'm gonna breathe in deeply. And then, and then out. for four and then exhale slowly. Okay, I'll try again. Breathing in and breathe out. <sighs> That's it. How do you feel? I feel a lot better. Thank you so much. So one thing that they did in the demo, like not necessarily you have to be careful what they show you is um, when they listen to you, they're converting your sounds into text. So when he's breathing deeply in and out, the AI can't actually understand that. So I really think that this part is part of scripted. You've just seen the voice capabilities, but we also want to show you the vision capabilities as the model can also see the whole world around us. Yeah, absolutely. Like, as you can see, you know, you can chat with ChatGPT in real time, but you can also interact with it um, with video as well. OK, so let me boot up ChatGPT. Hey, ChatGPT. Hello there. How's it going? It's going really well. Today, I'd really like your help solving a math problem. I'm all ears. What math problem can I help you tackle today? So I'm going to write down a linear equation on a sheet of paper, and I'll show you. And then I'd love your help working me through it. But importantly, don't tell me the solution. Just help give me hints along the way. Got it. I'll... OK, I see it. Hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I didn't show you yet. Just give me help <laughs> along the way. One second. Whoops. I got too excited. <laughs> I'm ready when you are. So, ChatGPT, what equation did I write down there? Ah, I see it now. You wrote down 3x plus 1 equals 4. Yep, Let's exactly. Work so what's the first step I should take to try to solve this? So it's reading very basic numbers. So what they're, what, what's really happening is when they're looking at a sheet, they're using OCR technology to basically convert those symbols into text, and then that text is sent into ChatGPT to answer it. The first step is to get all the terms with x on one side and the constants on the other side. 
So what do you think we should do with that plus one? Okay, I'm going to try to subtract one from both sides, and then I'll see what I get. Great idea. Perfect. Now, what do you get when you subtract one from both sides? Okay, so ChatGPT, this is what I ended up with. How does this look? Spot on. Now you've isolated the term with x on one side, and it looks like 3x equal 3. What do you think we should do next to solve for x? I'm not sure. Can you give me another hint? Of course. You have 3x, and you want to find the value of x. Think about what operation would undo multiplication. Is it subtraction? Close, but think of the opposite of multiplication, because 3x means 3 times x. Okay, I think it's division. Let me try to divide both sides by 3, and let me see what I get. Bingo! Go ahead and divide both sides by 3. Okay, so ChatGPT, this is what I ended up with. How does this look? It looks perfect. You've solved it, and x equals 1. Nicely done. So for the demo here, it's very simple math, so it can do it. But I think if you do way more complicated stuff, like differential equations and that stuff, I think it's going to start messing up. How do you know you can do linear equations? Can you yes. show us something more complex? I think so. <laughs> okay, right. next let's try something uh, coding related. So let me take out um, a computer for this. Hey, ChatGPT. Hey there. How's it going? Yeah, it's going really well. I was wondering if you could help me with a uh, coding problem today. Of course. I'd love to help you out. What's the coding problem you're dealing with? OK, I'm going to share with you some code. One second. Sure thing. Take your time. OK, so I just shared some code with you. Could you give me a really brief one-sentence description of what's going on in the code? This code fetches daily weather data for a specific location and time period, smooths the temperature data using a rolling average, annotates a significant weather event on the resulting plot, and then displays the plot with the average, minimum, and maximum temperatures over the year. Awesome. Thanks so much. And in the code, there's this function foo. Can you describe to me what the plot would look like if I had versus didn't have this function? Sure. The function foo x y takes in a data frame x containing temperature data and a window size y for calculating the rolling mean. It smooths the average temperature, minimum temperature, and maximum temperature columns by applying a rolling mean over the specified window. With the foo function, the plot would show smoother temperature lines because the rolling mean reduces the noise or fluctuations in the data. Awesome. So basically, um, by um, having it look at the code and explain the code, that's very meaningless in real life. Like, no developer would ever use that. Like, you can just read the code yourself. Um, and their examples are very simple. It's just like they took a notebook and then they have a graph. So this wouldn't be very useful um, to use. I think a more useful example is if you could take screenshots of real websites and tell it to replicate it in Tailwind. So Tailwind CSS is one of the one of the best CSS frameworks used right now because you can just copy the code from one project to another and it'll work every time. So one business idea you could do is basically um, take a screenshot of, of the sites you would like to copy and then tell the AI to uh, copy it and then um, have the code and then you can paste into your project. So, so far, ChatGPT has only been able to see the code. And now I'm going to run it, and then I'll use the vision capabilities of the ChatGPT desktop app so it can actually see everything going on on the screen as well. OK, ChatGPT, I'm sharing with you the plot now. I'm wondering if you can give me a really brief one-sentence overview of what you see. So I think one big trend that's going to start happening more is like um, having the AI be your teaching assistant. So basically, as you learn stuff, have it explain to you what certain things mean. I think that will be very valuable in the future, and it will, it will keep Getting bigger and bigger. Plot displays smoothed average, minimum, and maximum temperatures throughout 2018, with a notable annotation marking a big rainfall event in late September. Another, another application I think is going to be very popular is helping accessibility. So if someone is blind or they're deaf and these other disabilities, then you can have the AI help them assist them a lot more than, than you could before. A few minutes ago, we asked the live audience on X to submit a few requests for what they would like us to try out here. So I will take a couple of prompts. OK. Bot Gaskar wants to know if GPT-4O is capable of real-time translation. 
Mike, you want to try this one? Sure. Yeah, it? let's do it. All right. yeah. I, I um, speak Italian, it. so oh, we can okay, just cool. do English let's Italian. Try to do English Italian. Sure, let's do it. Hey, ChatGPT, how are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for asking. How about you? How's cool. your day going? I'm uh, doing great. So I would like you to function as a translator. I have a friend here who only speaks Italian, and I only speak English. And uh, every time you hear English, I want you to translate it to Italian. And if you hear Italian, I want you to translate it back to English. Is that good? Perfetto. <laughs> Mark, io mi chiedo se le balene potessero parlare, cosa ci direbbero? Mike, she wonders if whales could talk, what would they tell us? Um, they might ask, uh, how do we solve linear equations? Potrebbero chiederci come risolviamo le equazioni lineari. <laughs> Sicuramente, sì. <laughs> Certainly, yes. <laughs> Great. It looks like it works. So I think um, I think translation as as a service on the app will work pretty well. But again, these are, these conversations are very simple. I think if you were to do more complex stuff, more formal stuff like like government or speaking, government officials where you use technical terms, I think it might start messing up a little bit. So the next one is from Burrito John seventy eight who asks, <laughs> "Can you tell what you're feeling just by looking at your face?" Barrett, do you want to give this one a try? <laughs> Absolutely, let's try it out. <laughs> mm. Hey, ChatGPT. Hey there, what's up? How can I brighten your day today? Okay, yeah, so I'm going to show you um, a selfie of what I look like, and then I'd like you to try to see what emotions I'm feeling based on how I'm looking. Sounds like a fun challenge. Go ahead and show me that selfie, and I'll put my emotional detective hat on. Okay, so here's me. So what kind of emotions do you think I'm feeling? Hmm, it seems like I'm looking at a picture of a wooden surface. Oh, you know what? Um, that what? was the thing I sent you before. Don't worry, I'm not actually a table. Um, okay, so, so take, take another look. Ah, uh, that makes more sense. Ah, <laughs> uh, there we go. It looks like you're feeling pretty happy and cheerful, with a big smile and maybe even a touch of excitement. Whatever's going on, it seems like you're in a great mood. Care to share the source of those good vibes? Yeah, no, uh, the reason I'm in a really good mood is because we were doing a presentation showcasing how useful and amazing you are. <laughs> oh, stop it. You're making me blush. <laughs> amazing. So I think like having the AI able to read your face and expressions, I think can help people with um, uh, other illnesses, like Ill other illnesses that where like they have hard time recognizing emotions. Um, I remember I saw once there was a startup that basically by taking a scan of your face, they can tell your biometrics and kind of almost diagnose you for like what kind of uh, medical condition you may have um, based on your face. So there's going to be more applications of, of that. But again, I don't know how use, like how accurate it is. Um, unless you test it, you won't really know. <laughs> 